Oh, hello. I'm Mr. White. This is my Graceland. Let's get to work. Hello. I'm the actual Mr. White today, so no avatar. Let's get busy. Today's topic is diffusion. So you'll notice there's lots of types of diffusion. But what you need to understand is that all diffusion means is things are moving. Whether it's an idea, an actual object, or animals or people, right? That's diffusion. Moving something from here to there. There's two major types. Relocation and expansion. And then expansion has three subsets. Hierarchical, contagious, and stimulus. Today what I'm going to show you is how all of these work together. I'm going to give you an example you can use on the AP test in May. Start with relocation. And one of my least favorite animals, the horse. However, the horse was very influential in changing the lives of many in Western Hemisphere after exploration. This equine was not found in the Western Hemisphere. But thanks to some intrepid and ruthless conquistadors, we can now find horses everywhere. Relocation means that something is moving from here to there. So let's look. So we have our horse here and our Spanish vessel full of bearded, wonderful conquistadors. And they put the horse on the boat. The boat goes across the Atlantic. And when they arrive in the New World, they offload their horses. And horses do what most animals do. They start to replicate in number. Now, without this process of relocation to fusion, horses would have never been found in the Americas because they're not indigenous. So we can see that while the conquistadors brought many bad things, the horse was a good thing they brought. And we can see relocation to fusion. Some words and terms you want to keep in mind. The term hearth. Hearth is where something begins. So we see the horse brought over to the Americas began here, right, in Spain. Across from the ship was the vector, and now they've replicated and multiplied over here. That is relocation diffusion. Next, we have hierarchical diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is not only hard to say, actually it's just hard to say. It's easy to understand. Hierarchy means something is working from the top down. So, fashion is something that comes from the top down. Right? We don't do, I say we, the masses do not do what uh, other masses do. They do what an iconic person would do. So let's look. So we have this thousand dollar shirt that has a strike through designer shirt. It just says shirt, right? So let's see how this diffuses. So we go to kind of the hearth, again, the beginning, of fashion. Most would agree it's in France, right? In Paris, right? We see this wonderful Parisian model with this ridiculously avant-garde, wonderfully deep black t-shirt that says strike through designer shirt. So basically it just says shirt, right? She goes on a runway there. It's seen all over, it's streamed, right? It's retweeted, it's favorited, it's liked, whatever, right? We see the shirt starts up there. It's this powerful place of importance. It then goes to other powerful, important places. Next to <gasps> New York and LA. Right? The shirt starts to spread through other more influential and important nodes. However, keep in mind that at the top you have the most important node, right? the hierarchy. Right? So it's, we see a trickle down here. From New York and LA, it'll go to other tertiary cities, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Charlotte, Houston, and Philly. And then it'll go to right, quaternary cities, right? even smaller ones. And it goes lower and lower and lower until it gets to people like me. right? I'm at the bottom of the hierarchy. So we see with fashion, the hearth is at the top with fashionable cities, right? Paris, France, and it works its way down to these very small cities, and then eventually to people like Mr. White. That's hierarchical diffusion. Our next diffusion is contagious. Now contagious diffusion is very simple to understand, right? We see the word contagious, right? So someone sneezes, Right? It gets on you, you catch the disease, and you sneeze on someone else, so on and so forth. But let's look at it pictorially. So, we remember that word hearth. Hearth is always the beginning, or where something starts. So we see the hearth. This blue ink represents a phenomenon. It's coming out of this hearth, 
and it's going kind of whatever it touches next. It doesn't have to go from particular node to node. It just spreads without any kind of regard to barriers or people or the types of people or socioeconomic status. And it just keeps moving and moving. So this blue cloud, it could represent a lot of things. It could be an idea. So when the idea is young, it's at the hearth, and when it's out here at you and me, right, maybe it's much older. This could represent, uh, ooh, high schoolers, gossip, <gasps> right? It could also represent, right, your cool blog, right, your Instagram, right, that really awesome, terrible picture your friend took of you and is now spreading. So it can represent a lot of things, but contagious diffusion just means it is moving and spreading without any regard to who it's spreading to. So diseases are what we think of most. For the last one, we have stimulus diffusion. And I know if you're all like me, it's about lunchtime and you're ready to eat a delicious meal of food. Here we have a burger. And for stimulus diffusion, we're going to look at a massive, massive chain of restaurants in America. We all know it, so I'm not going to say it. And we see this burger here. However, stimulus diffusion is where something moves and then it has a slight change or shift or alteration to meet the taste or the needs of a new culture. So the burger, while it satisfies me completely, it might not satisfy the palate of someone, say, in Australia, Asia, Africa, or South America, or Europe. So when these burgers from this massive chain known worldwide moves to these places, they adapt the flavor, the taste, and even the contents to appease the people it's going to. So let's look at some examples. If you go to the Czech Republic, instead of a hamburger with pickles and onions, you now have pork patties with tomatoes and horseradish sauce. Those satisfy the taste of most people in the Czech Republic. If you're in the Czech Republic watching this and saying, hey, I don't eat horseradish or tomatoes or pork, I'm sorry, you're probably, you know, that exclude. you're probably a hipster actually, all right? So that's the taste of the Czech Republic as a whole. We can look at other cultures. Like if we go to Japan, we see that they have this, again, pork burger, but with a very high content of garlic, right, to satisfy their taste in teriyaki. It's got a lemon and, uh, it's got a lemon and lettuce topping to it, and this satisfies most taste in Japan. Now the two big examples I'm going to give you are the next ones, and these have to do with religious differences with food. If we look to the Arabian Peninsula, we can see that this is a chicken burger, right, with salad and a powerful garlic sauce. Now note that you won't find pork in this area, mostly because it's deemed unclean by these religions, right? Islam, right, they're not allowing pork. So we can see that it not only satisfies the taste, but it also satisfies some of the religious requirements of food. Again, a stimulus diffusion. So instead of a burger, you have the same essence, you have this, this staple top, right, with this protein center and some garnishment, they have changed that in order to make sure they meet all the standards. And then if you go to the subcontinent here in India, now you have a vegetarian burger, right, the McVeggie, sounds delicious, and it is covered in curry and mustard, and it's got a creamy dressing. Since most people in India are vegetarian, they want to satisfy those groups of people. So we can see that all of these groups of people have been changed through this stimulus diffusion. So, it came as a burger, it went to these different places, and it changed because of what the, the local taste and customs had to do with it. So just a quick recap. Remember, all of diffusion is moving something from here to wherever. It's moving things. But there's two different types, relocation and expansion. Relocation is the physical movement of something. Think about the horse we looked at earlier. Taking the horse from Europe to the New World. Expansion has three different types of subsets. So it's all in how are they getting bigger. So hierarchical is from a place or a person of vast importance. And it trickles down to people with less importance. And eventually gets to people like me. All right? We saw that with fashion. Started in Paris and goes to other bigger cities. And then eventually it gets to me in Alpharetta, Georgia. Contagious diffusion is probably the most simple to understand. It's something spreading without regard to who it's going to or where it's going. We see it mostly with sicknesses, all right? So remember, I sneeze on you, you get sick, you sneeze on someone else, and it's just a big domino effect. That's contagious. Stimulus diffusion, because with stimulus diffusion, you have the core idea taken by a group of people and altered where it's not 
unrecognizable, but it's now fitting their needs or their taste or their culture in a more apt way. So those are the types of diffusion you need to know for May. From myself, my avatar, and the spinning globe Jeff, I want to say thank you for watching my AP Human Geography video about diffusion. I hope you understand very well. Lastly, if you could do me a favor from the bottom of your heart, could you please press the subscribe button down below or the like button? 